What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Primetime Sports Podcast, hosted by Joey Millari. So in this episode, I'm going to give a breakdown of a good amount of teams in the NFL that are struggling with their cap situation right now. I'm going to give a breakdown of what I would do if I were in the situation of being their GM, who I would cut, who would I restructure, who would I extend to try to save money and get under the cap. There are a good amount of teams that are in the negatives by a good amount. So I'll break down a good amount of those teams, talk about what I would do, and then in my next episode, I'm going to give a breakdown of my fifth and sixth mock drafts, one of them being after week 17 of the NFL season, and then the sixth one I made just before the Super Bowl. So I just added those two picks in for San Francisco and Kansas City. So in this episode right here, I'm going to do a good amount of capology, which is the study of cap space. In this episode, we're going to give a breakdown of whether or not I would trade a player, cut a player, restructure, extend them to try to free up some cap space so each team can be under the salary cap by the start of free agency. So all of these numbers come from spot track of whether or not a player would save X amount of money if they were to be cut. Got all of these numbers from spot track. So let's start off with the Miami Dolphins. Coming off a good season last year, obviously they came up short, but they had a lot of injuries in that playoff game against the Kansas City Chiefs. And obviously playing in their cold is a big difference from what they play in at home in Miami. But no excuses, obviously. They lost the game, unfortunately. But heading into this offseason, they have some momentum based on this season. But right now, they're negative $51 million in cap space. They're $51 million over the salary cap. So all of my moves here I'm doing just to try to save them up some money and try to get them back in the positives rather than the negatives. So let's start off with my first move. I would cut defensive end Emmanuel Ogba. And I would cut him before June 1st. Most of these cuts that I'm going to talk about in this episode are going to be cuts before the June 1st deadline, which if you cut a play before June 1st and you designate it to be cut before then, teams have to chew more money since more money is typically guaranteed before June 1st. But immediate cap relief is more important in free agency. So that's why of these guys being cut before June 1st, meaning basically right now in the next few weeks to try to free up some money for some cap space for free agency. Immediate cap relief is important in free agency. So most of these moves that I'm going to talk about in this episode are going to be pre-June 1st cuts probably in the next week or two to try to save some teams some money to get them under the cap before free agency. So Ogba being cut would save the Miami Dolphins $13.7 million on this year's cap. They are chewing $4 million. He has a $17.7 million cap hit this season. They'd chew $4 million if they cut it before June 1st, but it would save them $13.7 million. That's immediate cap relief, which is huge. Another player I would cut, Mike White, a backup quarterback for them. His cap hits $5.2 million. Cutting him would save them $3.5 million. And I think it'd be best for them to just go out and get a guy in the draft or get a very cheap quarterback on the open market to be their backup. Which I know it's risky since Tua Tagovailoa has had his risk and his injuries in the past. But I think you're probably better off going out and getting a quarterback in the draft for cheaper and having that be the backup quarterback. Next up is a big move, and I'm not sure what's going to happen with this player. Xavier Howard, a cornerback for Miami. I would restructure him, but that does put them in a tougher position down the line. They need to get cap space to try to build this current roster since they are a contender right now. His cap hits $25.9 million. If he were to be restructured, it would save them $9.4 million. But obviously it would push money down the line and put them in a tough position a year or two from now. If he's cut after the June 1st designation, that would save Miami $18.5 million on this upcoming year's salary cap. Likely will probably happen. I think that's probably going to be the case. They're going to do a release with a post-June 1st designation. Or he could be traded, which would save them a good amount of money as well. But it would be tough to probably move that money. Before June 1st, though, being cut would only save Miami $2.8 million. That's not worth it in my eyes. So I think they're going to cut him with a post-June 1st designation. And yes, it would save them $18.5 million in this year's cap. They wouldn't be able to use that money anyways of that $18.5 million until after June 1st. But it would help them get under the salary cap before the start of free agency. Another player I would move is David Long, a linebacker for Miami. I would cut him. He's a $6.7 million cap hit this season. Cutting him would save $4.5 million. Keon Carlson, a defensive back, for the Miami Dolphins, used to play for the Giants, the Houston Texans, and New England Patriots. Cutting them would save them $3.2 million. That's what his cap hit is. If it were to be cut, it saves them all of it. $3.2 million just about. Then I would also cut Duke Riley, a linebacker on Miami. $3 million is his cap hit. Cutting would save them $2.5 million. Then I would restructure Tyree Kill, a wide receiver. We know it's going to be there for more than just this upcoming season, so pushing money down the line isn't the worst-case scenario for him. If he were to get another extension, you can continue to push that money down the line if you want to. But his cap hits $31.2 million this season. Restructuring him would save $12.3 million on this year's cap, which I think is the best decision for Miami. 
Another player I would restructure is their kicker, Jason Sanders. You never really want to restructure a kicker because you don't want their cap hit to be six or seven million in a couple years. But his cap hit for this season is four point five million. If they were to restructure him, that would save them just about one point seven five million. And Miami needs to get under the cap, so I don't think they really have an option. They're gonna have to restructure some guys they don't want to, or have to cut some guys they don't want to. That's what you're gonna have to do if you're negative fifty one million in cap space. I would also cut running back Jeff Wilson. Three point seven million dollars is his cap hit. If you cut him, you save three million dollars. And then starting linebacker Jerome Baker, I would also cut. That's a tough decision. His cap is $14.8 million heading into the season. Cutting would save them just about $9.9 million. And even though it is a tough decision to make, they're going to have to make some tough decisions here. If they were to make all these moves with Xavier Howard being a post-June 1st cut, that would save them about $72 million on the cap, leaving them with just about $21 million to work with in free agency. But mind you, of that money that's now freed up and available to use, they can't use $18 million of that until after June 1st. Since Xavier Howard in this scenario is a post-June 1st designated trade or, or cut. I don't know what they're going to do with him, but I don't think they're going to bring him back. He's not going to restructure his deal. They already had problems a couple years ago with Xavier Howard being upset with the money he was getting. So I do think this is the end of the line for him in Miami. Very good cornerback, but they have to make a tough decision, and I think it's going to be a post-June 1st trade or cut. If they were to cut him, though, after June 1st, and then you include all those moves I made, like cutting Duke Riley and cutting Jerome Baker, that would save Miami $72 million, leaving them with $21 million to work with. And maybe they could get a pay cut from a guy like Toronto Armstead, who's getting older, still a good player, but injury-prone and older. And maybe if they extend to a tag of a lower, if they do feel like he's the guy, that could save the money as well. So that's what I would do with Miami. Next up, we have the Los Angeles Chargers. And when I did this just about a week or two ago, they had negative $44 million in cap space, and this was before Corey Lindsley got a pay cut. Now they're at $33 million in the negatives. And this is what I would do. I would cut wide receiver Mike Williams. $32.4 million cap hit this season. Cutting him would save $20 million. It would be better off for them to go out and get a receiver in the draft for cheaper. And Mike Williams has had his injuries. And obviously, even though when he is on the field, he is a good player, you can't rely on him to stay healthy. And he's definitely not worth $32.4 million on the cap. Next up, this is a very tough decision. But I would cut star edge rusher Klomek. And this is a very hard move to make considering he had a great season this past year. But this Chargers team needs cap space desperately. And maybe they could try to work out a trade, trading or cutting Klomak. Both of them are tough moves. And I think trading would be tough since it's really tough to move a cap hit of $38.5 million. But being able to cut him would save up this team $23.2 million on the cap, which would be huge. Even though he was great this season, it's a very hard move to make. I would love to see him stay in Los Angeles. But the reality is this team needs cap space. And right now, he's chewing up $38.5 million heading into this season. If one of these guys I've mentioned here ends up staying between Mike Williams, Khalil Mack, Eric Hendricks, and Joey Boza. I think Khalil Mack's the most likely to stay. I think Eric Hendricks is gone. I think they end up cutting him. He has a $9.25 million cap hit heading into the season. The decision to release him would save them $6.5 million. I think he's gone. And then defensive end Joey Boza, $36.6 million cap hit this season. Cutting him would save them $14.3 million. Yes, they are chewing $22 million on this year's cap, but I think it's the best decision for this team. So of those four guys I mentioned here that I would cut, I think Klomak has the best chance of staying around. And if I had to pick one of these guys to keep, it's Klomak. But it's obviously tough for the $38.5 million cap hit. If you can cut him, you save $23.2 million on the cap. That would be huge for this team. And then I would also extend Keenan Allen. He has a $34.4 million cap hit this season. If you extend him, it would save up $17.5 million on this year's cap. And yes, it does put you in a tougher situation down the line. But this team right now after getting Jim Harbaugh, a coach that they needed for a long time since obviously Brandon Staley wasn't the answer, now you get Jim Harbaugh to step in, this team can make moves and make plays right away and make a run in the AFC. And we'll see what they do in free agency. We'll see what they do in the draft. But they have to go out and make moves right now to free up cap space to try to build this team. And if you could extend Keenan Allen, because cutting him probably would be a tough decision to make since he had such a great season, was one of the best receivers in the NFL this season, I think it's best to extend him, push the money down the line, and then use that money to try to go out and add in free agency. So all of these moves would save the Chargers around $82 million, giving them $48 million to use in free agency. And a week ago, I would have said to cut Corey Lindsley since it was rumored he would retire anyways, but he took a pay cut this past week. His cap hit before the pay cut was $14.1 million. Cutting him would have saved $8.9 million, but his pay cut actually saved the team $11 million. So it ended up working out for the Chargers that Lindsay took a pay cut. And that ends up being huge for this team. Now they have just about $48 million to use in free agency. 
if all those moves happened. If they extended Keenan Allen, if they cut Boza, they cut Hendricks, they cut Khalil Mack, and they cut Mike Williams. We'll see what this team does. But they obviously have a lot of work to do to try to get under the salary cap. But at the same time, they have three or four guys that could cut right away and get under it rather easily. Like Khalil Mack, Mike Williams, and Joey Boza. Three heavy contracts there. And I know cutting some of these guys is a tough decision because cutting Khalil Mack and obviously Xavier Howard, cutting those two guys from Miami and Los Angeles, that ends up leaving a big hole in your secondary in Miami then obviously in the pass rushing game for the Chargers. But tough decisions are going to have to be made, especially when you're that far deep and you're that far above the salary cap. So next up, I have the Buffalo Bills, another team that's heavily over the salary cap. They're minus $54 million in cap space. What would I do? I would cut Razul Douglas, a cornerback for Buffalo that has a $9 million cap hit this season. If you cut him, you save all $9 million. I would also cut Naheem Hines, a running back that struggled with injuries over the last couple seasons in the NFL. I thought the move to Buffalo was a great move, but he's been injured there. He has a $5.4 million cap hit this season. Cutting him would save $4.98 million. Wide receiver Deontay Hardy, $5.5 million cap hit this season. Cutting him would save $4.2 million. I would also cut Saran Neal, a cornerback for Buffalo, which this secondary, there's a lot of moves that have to be made there. I would cut Neal. He's a $3.4 million cap hit this season. Cutting him would save $2.88 million. Next up, I would restructure quarterback Josh Allen's contract. He has a cap hit of $47 million this season. If he's restructured, that would save the team $17.9 million on this year's cap which at some point will probably get a new extension, so you can always keep pushing that money down the line if he gets a new extension in, let's say, three or four seasons. So I think saving them $18 million right now is a better decision for this team. Yes, obviously you never want to push money down the line. That's never what you want to do. But there's ways around working around the salary cap, and that's what teams do nowadays. Everyone restructures deals and pushes money down the line to try to make things work and get under the salary cap for this upcoming season. That's what you always think. Everyone thinks of the present, and they push money down the line and might put them in a tough position down the line, just like we see with the New Orleans Saints, who kept backloading contracts and pushing money down the line for years and restructuring so many deals, and now it's catching up to them. So there is a risk with restructuring deals and pushing money down the line and loaning money from future years. It's obviously not the best decision, but sometimes you have to make that decision. So for Josh Allen, restructuring his deal would save him $18 million. And I don't know if Buffalo would want to do that. But I do think one of these guys needs to be restructured. Josh Allen, Von Miller, Stephon Diggs. Who's the best decision there? I would say Josh Allen probably. Since Von Miller, I think that contract was atrocious. I think it was a mistake by Buffalo. And then Stephon Diggs, I think he might be out of Buffalo at some point soon. So restructuring money and pushing money down the line could make his contract harder to move. So I think Josh Allen's probably the best decision to restructure among those three guys. Next up, I would cut Tyron Johnson. He has a $12.4 million cap hit this season. If you cut him, you save $7.7 million. And this is a tough decision to make considering I'm rebuilding their entire secondary this offseason, getting rid of a lot of guys like Razul Douglas and Tyron Johnson. Maybe one of those guys ends up being extended and that ends up saving the money against the cap. But for the sake of this exercise, I have Tyron Johnson and Razul Douglas both being cut. Next up, I also have the Bills cutting Mitch Morse, their starting center. And this is a tough decision. He has an $11.4 million cap hit. But cutting him would save them $8.4 million. And I think it's more likely that he takes a pay cut rather than being released. But for the sake of this exercise, I'm being cut just to save more money. I'm not really too sure what his pay cut money would be, what he would save against the cap, and what his dead money would be. So I wanted just to be definite with what I would be saving the team. So I ended up cutting him for the sake of this exercise. But I do think it's more likely that he comes back on a pay cut rather than being released. But being released would save the team $8.4 million. And lastly, we have Jordan Poirier, a longtime safety for the Bills. Cutting him would save them $5.47 million against the cap. He has a $7.4 million cap hit. And yes, they would need a major rebuild of their secondary if they got rid of all these guys. But I do think it's Jordan Poirier's time to leave Buffalo. And I think he's on the downtrend. So all of these deals would save Buffalo just about $61 million in cap, leaving them with just about $4 million to spend. So there's more moves that have to be made in Buffalo. These are just the moves that I came up with and put together. So next up, we have the New York Jets who currently have $7 million in cap space, so they're not in the negatives. But these are moves that I would make rather quickly to get some money to use in free agency. First, I would restructure defense and lineman Quinny Williams' deal. He has a $20.4 million cap hit this season. Restructuring his deal would give them $11 million to use in cap space. Next up, I would also cut CJ Uzama, a tight end for the Jets. Right now, he has an $11.2 million cap hit. Cutting him would save them $5.3 million. Next up, I would restructure defensive end John Franklin Myers' deal. He has a $16.3 million cap hit. Restructuring his deal would save him $6.58 million. And then the last guy I would restructure is Quincy Williams, who is a linebacker for the New York Jets. 
a six point nine million dollar cap hit. Restructuring would save them around two point four million. So these four deals would free up just about twenty five million dollars in cap space, leaving the Jets with just about thirty three million dollars to use in free agency. And I think they have to make these moves because they need to help out Aaron Rodgers. He needs help on that offensive line. And there's some tough decisions that are going to have to be made. C.J. Mosley, the hunt and soul that defense, he's due $21 million on the cap next season. If they cut him, that would save them $11 million. Does he take a pay cut to stay around? Do they extend him to try to push money down the line? I'm not really too sure what the Jets are going to do. He is getting older, so I don't think an extension would make much sense here for them. So a pay cut's probably the best decision for him. Or they do end up cutting him. I would keep him around, though, since he is the hunt and soul of the defense. So the Jets have to find a resolution there. A guy like John Franklin Myers, I have him being restructured. But I do think there's a chance that the Jets cut him as well. Cutting him would save $7.3 million. That's probably unlikely that they do that. But the Jets have a lot of tough decisions to make. And the fact of the matter is this. Aaron Rodgers isn't getting any younger. He probably only has a year or two left in the NFL. The Jets need to go and find a way to help him. He needs help on the offensive line. He needs help in the wide receiver position. And there's a lot of tough decisions to make. What's going to happen with C.J. Mosley? He had a $21 million cap hit heading into the season. Are they going to cut him? If you cut him, you save $11 million. But then obviously you have a big gap there in your linebacking core since he was the hot and soul of the team. So there's some big decisions to make here for the Jets. I think they end up keeping C.J. Mosley around. Is he going to get a pay cut? I'm not really too sure, but a resolution has to be made there. I think they could cut a guy like John Franklin Myers. That would save them around $7 million. But I don't think they're going to do that. They're probably going to keep him around. But the reality is they have to fix the offensive line. They need to add another receiver. And they have some big decisions to make. Aaron Rodgers isn't getting any younger, like I said. This is make or break for the Jets in the next year or two. Win or lose, win or go home, this is it for the Jets. So they have to go and try to figure these moves out to try to free up some cap space and add to this team. They do have a top draft pick as well. Keep that in mind. And they do have some nice young pieces that they can build around. I think if they were to get Devontae Adams and pair him with Aaron Rodgers, that would be awesome to watch again. But obviously it would come at a big cost. Obviously a lot of money, and then you have to give up some draft picks as well. I'm not really too sure they're going to do that. But Aaron Rodgers needs another receiver as well. Next is Garrett Wilson. So the next team up, the Cleveland Browns. Negative $25 million in cap space. The first thing I would do, I would extend Amari Cooper. Right now, he has a $23.7 million cap hit. But if you extend him, that saves $15 million on this year's cap. $15 million. So that's the first move I would make. I would find a way to extend Amari Cooper and save $15 million. Then is a big move, and this is a tough one to make. I would cut running back Nick Chubb. Yes, there is a chance he takes a pay cut. That's probably what he wants to do. He probably wants to go back to Cleveland. Right now, he's a $15.8 million cap hit. So there's no chance he comes back on a $16 million cap hit. That's not going to happen. It's either he's cut or he takes a pay cut to stick around. But if they were to cut him, that would save $11.8 million in the cap. And here's my thinking. Amari Cooper with Jerome Ford and Joe Flacco had this team in a better position at the end of the season than Deshaun Watson and Nick Chubb. And I know Nick Chubb got hurt. He's a great running back. I'm a big fan of him. But the reality is they're not going to keep him around for $16 million as a cap hit. So there's going to be a decision made there. It's likely probably a pay cut, but for the sake of this exercise, once again, I haven't been cut just because it's a concrete amount of money that I know that they're saving. They're saving $11.8 million if they cut him. If he gets a pay cut, I'm not really too sure what his money would be. And I want an exact money of what I would be saving these teams. So that's why cutting Nick Chubb makes the most sense him math-wise. Next up, I would also cut tight end Jordan Aikens. $2.3 million cap hit. If you cut him, that would save $2 million. And then I would restructure quarterback Denzel Ward's contract. He has a $23.4 million cap hit. Restructuring would save them $11.1 million. All of these moves would save them just about $40 million, giving them just about $15 million to use in free agency. And yes, they could restructure Deshaun Watson's contract to save them about $30 million, but I think that's a very dangerous move since he hasn't really shown anything yet in Cleveland. And as I said, I think Joe Flacco had them in a better position, meaning giving that $30 million up and saving it in the cap this year but sending it down the line means you'd probably have to extend him at some point to avoid a $75 million cap hit in 2025 and 2026. And that wouldn't make sense either way right now. It wouldn't make sense to restructure, and right now it wouldn't make any sense to bank on him getting an extension. So I think they probably just sit there still and don't restructure his contract. That would make the most sense, and that's what I would do if I were the Cleveland Browns. Next up, we have the Denver Broncos. Negative $26 million in cap space. What would I do? First up, I would restructure Mike McGlinchey's contract. He has an $18.5 million cap hit this season. Restructuring would save them just about $10.4 million. I would also restructure linebacker Alex Singleton's contract. $7.3 million he gets on the cap this year. That would save them $2.7 million if he's restructured. 
I would cut wide receiver Tim Patrick, fifteen point five million dollar cap hit. Cutting him would save nine point five million against the cap. He's a guy that's been hurt over the last couple seasons. Next up, I would also cut Samaji P. Ryan. Right now, he's a four point five million dollar cap hit. If you cut him, that would save three million dollars. And there's cheaper running back options in the draft that are probably a better idea for Denver right now. So it makes sense to get rid of P. Ryan and save three million dollars against the cap. But Denver put themselves in this position. They really did. By going all in for Sean Payton and Russell Wilson and coming up short, they put themselves in this position. And a major question this offseason, besides Justin Fields and whether or not he's going to stay in Chicago, what are the Denver Broncos going to do with Russell Wilson? Trading him is going to be too difficult, I think, because of his contract. And then cutting him is a bad financial decision in my eyes. Because then it leaves you with $50 million in dead money. So I don't think that's going to happen either. So cutting him is not going to happen, I don't think. And I don't think a trade's going to happen. Could a restructure happen? I think the Denver Broncos would like a restructure, but I don't think he wants one, and he would have to accept one. Right now, he's a $35.4 million cap hit. A restructure would save Denver $12.6 million on the cap, but I don't think he's going to restructure, especially if he's not going to be the starting quarterback in Denver, especially if they go in a different direction. But once again, the Denver Broncos did this to themselves, giving up all those draft picks to get Russell Wilson in a Denver Broncos uniform from Seattle, and then also giving up all of that money as well in the contract they gave him right away. Denver did this to themselves. And then they also went all in to get Sean Payton. And I love an all-in mentality. But the Denver Broncos completely failed. They completely failed at both of those moves. And when you look at this Denver team, they obviously weren't a quarterback away. And I thought that when the trade went down. When everybody was saying the Denver Broncos are now a contender when they got Russell Wilson, I didn't see that. Right away, I thought Seattle won that trade rather easily. Because I thought Russell Wilson was declining before our eyes in Seattle. And obviously now you see he was not the answer for the Denver Broncos. He was declining already in Seattle. And I remember Colin Coward had the most ridiculous sports take I ever heard. When Russell Wilson was about to be traded from Seattle and no one knew where he was going to go, he said the Giants should give up 10 first-round picks to get Russell Wilson. And that still to this day is the most ridiculous sports take I ever heard. Because look at the Denver Broncos right now. They're in a really tough position. They can't cut Russell Wilson because then they have $50 million of dead money. Nobody's going to take that deal in a trade. And he's not going to agree to a restructure. So what are you going to do? What are the Denver Broncos going to do? They're probably just going to have to let him sit on the bench next season. I would probably just start him, since they're in too deep financially, they probably can't get out of it right now. I would probably just start Russell Wilson. And I would try to get a restructure, but I think that's unlikely. Let's say he does restructure his deal, that would save them $12.6 million against the cap. But once again, I don't think that's going to happen. So here are the moves that I would make if I were the Denver Broncos. Like I said, I'd restructure Mike McGlinchey, I would restructure Alex Singleton, I would cut Tim Patrick, I would cut P. Ryan, I would also cut Riley Dixon. Right now, he's a $2 million cap hit. Cutting him would save $1.7 million. And maybe you find a cheaper option it is an undrafted free agent or in the draft or in free agency. And then I would also restructure wide receiver Colton Sutton's deal. He has a $17.3 million cap hit this season. Restructuring him would save $6.4 million against the cap. And then I would also cut left tackle Garrett Bowles. And this is a tough decision, but this team needs cap flexibility. He has a $20 million cap hit. Cutting Garrett Bowles would save him $16 million. All of these moves would free up just about $50 million in cap space, giving them just about $18 million to use in free agency. They'd have $18 million left to use if all of these moves happened. And that doesn't include the Russell Wilson restructure. If you restructure Russell Wilson's contract, that would free up about $62 million in cap space, giving them just about $30 million to use in free agency. And I'd also think about cutting Jarrett Stidham. That would save them $5 million in the cap. That would be a smart decision, and then I'd also just draft a quarterback in the middle rounds like Joe Milton, But I don't think this team's going to get rid of Stidham and Russell Wilson. So I stayed away from making a decision on either guy, but I would cut Jarrett Stidham if I were them. If you cut Jarrett Stidham with all those moves I included, besides the Russell Wilson restructure, that would give them just about $23 million to use in free agency. That would free up around $55 million, and right now the negative $26 million in cap, which would give them around $23 million to use in free agency. But the Denver Broncos are in a really tough position right now, and that's because they're paying the price of the Russell Wilson deal. All they gave up draft capital-wise and obviously all the money they gave Russell Wilson, all of that was a mistake. And at the time when they gave up all that, I thought it was a horrible deal for Denver because of how much they had to give up and obviously all the money he got when I thought he was already declining in Seattle. And I could never be more thankful that the Giants didn't make a deal because right now they'd be in a really, really tough position if they went out and got Russell Wilson in a trade with Seattle and if they gave him all that money. And I know a lot of people like to point out Daniel Jones' contract. The Giants can get out of Daniel Jones' contract after this upcoming season rather easily. We're not in as bad a position quarterback-wise than the Denver Broncos are. And I still believe in Daniel Jones. I still believe he can be the answer for the New York Giants at quarterback. And if not in New York, I think he could be good in, let's say, Atlanta, 
maybe even a team like the Raiders, which I said a few years ago, I thought he could be the next Jim Plunkett. A guy that goes from a franchise that ran him out of town. Jim Plunkett was at the Patriots in the 70s. They ran him out of town, then he won two Super Bowls with the Raiders. Daniel Jones, let's say he gets run out of New York. If he wins two Super Bowls with the Raiders, I wouldn't be surprised since I predicted that just about two years ago now on my radio show at BC, The Playbook with Joe Inzak. And we'll see what happens. But I still believe in Daniel Jones. I believe he can be the answer for the New York Giants. And I think he can be a winning quarterback in the NFL. I really do. So speaking of the Giants, right now they have $26 million in cap. So they're one of the only teams I'm going to mention in this episode that's in the positives in cap. The Jets were and the Giants are. The Giants have $26 million to use. But I have some deals that I would do to try to free up some cap space. I would cut Mark Lewinsky. Even though he's a starting guard, a $7.1 million cap hit for a guy that really struggled the last couple seasons, cutting him would save $5.6 million. I think that's a good decision for them. I would also cut defensive lineman Raheem Nunez-Roaches. He has a $4.3 million cap hit. Cutting him would save $1.46 million. I would also think about cutting tight end Darren Waller. Even though he's a good player, did battle injuries this season, it didn't really have much success even when he was on the field. A $14 million cap hit, Cutting him would save $6.2 million. I would also cut cornerback Aaron Robinson. $1.6 million cap hit. Cutting him would save $1.3 million. A guy that's battled injuries, and the Giants could probably go out and find a guy for cheaper in the draft. I would also cut linebacker Boogie Basham. A $1.4 million cap hit. If you cut him, you would save all $1.4 million. This all would save the Giants $17 more million in cap space, giving them around $43 million to use in free agency, which would be great to see. So the last team I'm going to mention, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Negative $4 million in cap space right now. And here's what I would do. I would restructure linebacker Alex Highsmith's deal. $14 million cap hit. A restructure would save $7.25 million. I would also cut center Mason Cole. A $6.2 million cap hit. Cutting him would save $4.75 million. I would also cut Keanu Neal, a safety for them. $2.7 million cap hit. A $2.25 million savings if you were to cut him. I would cut wide receiver Allen Robinson. $11.9 million cap hit. Cutting him would save $10 million. I think that's a no-brainer. I would also cut cornerback Patrick Peterson, even though he was pretty good for them when they picked him up. A $9.7 million cap hit for an aging cornerback is a lot to give up. Cutting him would save $6.85 million. I think that's the best decision for them. I would also add a void year for defensive lineman Cam Hayward. I would ask him to take a pay cut, but I don't think that's going to happen. So I would add a void year to his deal. Right now, he has a $22 million cap hit. Cutting him would save $16 million. And even though I think that's probably not a bad decision for them, I don't see that happening. He's a leader for that team and hot and soul probably that defense. So I'd maybe add a void year to maybe save around 8 to $9 million. And then the last move I'd make, I would either cut or restructure defensive end Larry Ogunjobi. Right now he's $13 million cap hit. Cutting him would save $6.2 million. All of these moves would save Pittsburgh around $46 million, leaving them with just about $32 million to use in free agency. And the last team I'm going to mention, I'm not really even going to break down their team yet just because it's probably going to be a lot more work than I do with the rest of these teams, the New Orleans Saints. They are an absolute mess right now. I don't know what these teams are going to do. They've been in cap hell now for probably five or more seasons, pushing money down the line, restructuring deals, and now it's caught up to them. Right now, they have negative $82 million of cap space. They're $82 million in the negatives with very limited flexibility. Yes, they can restructure guys more, but that's only going to hurt their cap space in the future as well. And that would only put them further downhill in the future. I'm going to look into their salary cap probably in the next few days, and maybe in my next episode where I talk football, I talk what I would do if I were the New Orleans Saints. But they're going to be a lot more work than I had to do with the rest of these teams. But for years, the Saints found their way around the salary cap. Restructuring deals, backloading contracts, pushing money further and further down the line. But now it's really caught up to them. They're in a really, really tough position. And I don't think anybody knows what they're going to do. They have a lot of work to do. A lot more work than the rest of these teams I mentioned today. And that's the thing. You really have to figure out what you want to do. Do you want to try to backload contracts and restructure deals and hurt yourself in the future? Or would you rather just get contracts over with and at the end of the day, chew money right now and obviously put yourself in a tough position for right now, but put yourself in a better future in the next two or three years and save your salary cap two or three years from now by not restructuring deals. And for the Miami Dolphins, I could have restructured Bradley Chubb's contract. But the issue is this. Bradley Chubb just had a second major leg injury and restructuring a deal that probably isn't going to last too much longer in Miami and pushing money further down the line is probably going to hurt you more in the future than it's going to help you right now. So I didn't restructure his deal. And Russell Wilson's contract, I think would help the Denver Broncos right now since they're in the negatives. Restructuring that deal could help them currently. But at the same time, it's going to hurt them a little bit more in the future when they do end up getting rid of him and trying to cut him. So it's obviously give and take. 
And the Denver Broncos are in a tough position. The New Orleans Saints are in a worse position, though. Denver could try to restructure Russell Wilson's contract, which I would do just to try to get immediate cap flexibility for this season. But it also does hurt them further in the future, like I said. So there's give and take. Some teams, it makes sense to restructure deals. When you're trying to contend right now, the Miami Dolphins, Buffalo Bills, it makes sense to restructure deals. When you're in a tough position like the New Orleans Saints, and they've been trying to compete, but they're staying just about average every single season, and at some point, you're probably going to say there's no more restructuring deals. It doesn't make much sense to keep restructuring deals since it's only hurting our future even more, and we're never going to get over the hump of competing and trying to contend for a title. For Denver, I think it would make sense, as I said, to restructure Russell Wilson's deal for immediate cap flexibility. But does that mean Denver's going to be in a better position and be contending next season? Probably not. And that's with Russell Wilson even having a bounce back season. He's still not worth the money he's getting. So there's a big question mark for Denver. Do they want to push money further downhill by pushing money further down the line and hurting their future more? Or would they rather just stay in the moment? Obviously, it's not a great situation with his contract, but let the money play out and not mortgage their future even more. There's a big toss up there. And sometimes pushing money further down the line and restructuring deals might hurt you more in the future than it's helping you right now. And for the Denver Broncos, I think it might help them by restructuring Russell Wilson's deal. But at the same time, it might be a major mistake. It's obviously a big toss-up. And like I said, Russell Wilson's probably not going to agree to a restructure. I think he has to, if I remember right. So there's obviously a lot of things to figure out. Sometimes restructuring deals don't always help. But like I said, sometimes teams are contending and restructuring makes sense to try to keep their guys around while also adding to try to contend. But other times it doesn't make sense to restructure by pushing money further down the line and hurting your future more. Look at the New Orleans Saints, like I said. They continue to push money further downhill, and they continue to stay average and continue to hurt their future even more by pushing money further and further down the line. Sometimes you don't have an option, but for years they've made the option to continue to push money further down the line rather than just cutting plays when it made sense. And now they're in a position where they probably can't even cut plays to save money. They have to continue to restructure guys or ask guys to take pay cuts. And that's not always an easy situation to have. And like I've already said, if you cut a player, yeah, it does free up some cap space, but you still have to find a way to fill that spot on the roster. And obviously fill that player's role in the team as well. If you cut a starting linebacker, not only are you saving money, yes, but you're also losing a starting linebacker. And that's a position you have to fill with the limited money you're getting back after cutting the player. So it's obviously a lot of work. And all these decisions I made today were really just for fun. Who knows if any of these things are actually going to happen. But I did it for fun. Just looked at eight teams, six of them that are in the negatives, and said, what would I do if I were in that team's front office trying to figure out a way to get under the cap? Anyways, that'll wrap up this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to listen to this. As always, I appreciate it. I hope you guys have a good one, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thank you.